Section 1.7 is on functions. A function is defined as a relation in which there is exactly one output for each input. In other words, each x is paired with only one y. Or another way to say that, say this, is there are no repeated x's. So you're never going to see the same number for x appear twice. Let's take a look at a ex couple examples here. Determine whether each relation is a function, and then explain. So here we have a mapping, and so I have the elements of the domain are negative 2, 0, 3, and 4. The elements of the range are negative 3, 6, and 9. And notice that negative 2 is mapped to negative 3, 0 is mapped to 6, 3 is also mapped to 6, and 4 is mapped to 9. The key thing here is that there is no element of the domain, no x, that is paired up with two different elements of the range. Okay, so if I had, let's say I had a line here from the negative 2 and it also went to the 6, that would mean I'd have the ordered pair negative 2, negative 3, and the ordered pair negative 2, 6, and that would make it not a function. But because each x, each element of the domain, goes to a different y, it is indeed a function. Yes, it is a function because there are no repeated x's. x doesn't go to, actually maybe a better way to say it is each x um, does not go to two different y's. Okay, each x goes to a y, but one x doesn't go to two different y's. Here we have a table. The elements of the domain are across the top, the elements of range are across the bottom, and this is an example of more of a horizontal table, whereas in the previous lessons I did it vertically. 1 comma 4 would be an ordered pair, 3 comma 2, and so on. And you'll notice that in the domain I actually have x equals 1 twice, so no, this is not a function. <clears throat> oh, abbreviation for function can be FCN. Okay, and it's not a function because x equals 1 is repeated. Okay, and example number 3 here has the following set of ordered pairs, 2 comma 1, 3 comma negative 2, 3 comma 1, 2 comma negative 2, and you'll notice that in the ordered pairs, right here x equals 3 and x equals 3. So again, this one is not a function. because x equals 3 repeats. It's okay for elements of the range or y's to repeat, but not for x's to repeat. A discrete function is a graph of points that are not connected. In other words, the graph is going to be just a bunch of dots. That's how I remember it. Discrete is going to be dots. They're not connected with lines. A continuous function is a graph of a line or a smooth curve. So yes, you have, may have some dots, but they're all connected by a, a straight line or a curve, which means that all of the points in between any of those dots you may see are also a part of the function. And the vertical line test is a method of determining if a graph is a function just by looking at it without having a set of ordered pairs or a mapping. What the vertical line test says that is if a vertical line, and remember, a vertical line goes up and down, okay, if a vertical line crosses the graph in more than one place at a time, then it is not a function. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. And unfortunately, I can't show you this as I would in the classroom, but imagine you're holding your pencil so that it's going up and down, and move it from left to right across the graph. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw a vertical line here so you kind of remember what it looks like. So if I were to take this green line and move it from left to right across this graph, it would not cross the pink curve in more than one place at a time. So yes, this is a function because as, it cro as the green line would cross the pink curve, it only crosses it in one place at a time. So no matter where I drew it, if I drew it here, it's only crossing there. If I drew it there, it's only crossing there. 
and so on. No matter where I draw this vertical line, it only crosses it in one place at a time. Okay. The next one is a circle, the blue circle or ellipse or oval or something. And notice I can draw my vertical line there and it doesn't cross it at all. I could draw my vertical line like that and it would cross the function in exactly one place. I'm sorry, the, the graph in one place. But if I drew the vertical line here, it would cross the circle in two places at the same time. So that means that this graph is not a function because it cro can cross the circle in two places at one time. Okay. <clears throat> and my last example here is kind of a strange graph. So it's a, vert a, vert uh, excuse me, a horizontal line right here. And notice this is a closed circle. So x equals 0 is part of this. But then up here we have another horizontal line but it's an open circle, so x is not equal to 0 right there. So if I were to draw my vertical line over here, it crosses it in one point. If I were to draw my vertical line here, it only crosses it in one point. And even if I were to draw my vertical line, let's say right there on the y-axis, okay, it's not crossing the graph right here where the open circle is. It's really only crossing it right there. So yes, this is a function because it only crosses it in one place at a time. So to determine if an equation is a function, make a table, graph it, and connect the points, and then use the vertical line test. So here we have the equation y equals 2x plus 1, and we need to determine if that's a function. So I'm going to make a simple table of values here. Okay. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to keep this pretty simple, and just pick three values for x. Oops. I wanted to do negative 2, 0, and 2. Make sure that you do a positive, a negative, and a 0. And remember, you've probably done some of this in pre-algebra. I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x. So that's going to give me 2 times negative 2 plus 1, or negative 4 plus 1 gives me a negative 3. Plugging in 0 for x, 2 times 0 plus 1 gives me a 1. <clears throat> and then plugging in 2 for x, 2 times 2 plus 1 gives me 5. So let's go ahead and graph those points. Negative 2, negative 3, 0, 1, and 2, 5. Okay, connect those. And now let's look at this graph and figure out does this pass the vertical line test? So if I were to move my green line, my vertical green line across, does it only cross it in one place at a time? Indeed it does. In fact, I can kind of tell by looking, no matter where I put my green line, it's only going to cross the pink line in one place at a time. So yes, this is a function. And the last concept we're going to take a look at is called function notation. And it uses this notation right here with an f and an x in parentheses. And I know it looks like you're saying f times x, but it's really pronounced f of x. So f and with an x in parentheses is pronounced f of x. And basically f of x is the same thing as y. So if I had the equation y equals 3x plus 2, I could also write that as f of x equals 3x plus 2 f of x is telling me the value of the function in terms of whatever x is. And it's a little confusing, but let's just go with it. So here's some examples. If f of x equals 3x minus 4, that's one function, and g of x equals x squared plus 2, that's a separate function, find each value. I should have said back there, most of the time we use f, f of x, but you can also use g of x, x or h of x, or j of x, or whatever you'd like. So to find f of negative 4, I'm going to take my f of x, which is defined as 3x minus 4, and I'm going to take this negative 4 and plug it in both parts here for x. <clears throat> if I'm looking to find f of negative 4, I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x. So f of negative 4 is going to equal 3 times 
negative 4, because that's 3 times x, and then this minus 4 out here. Okay, this just stays f of negative 4, that doesn't change, that's not like negative 4x, it's not multiplication, it's just a notation. And this side, I just PEMDAS this, so negative 12 minus 4, or for my final answer, f of negative 4 is equal to negative 16. Another way of saying this is, if I have this function, and let's say I wrote this with a y, y equals 3x minus 4, whenever x is negative 4, my y is negative 16. Okay, let's try this one here, f of a plus 2, and notice I can't combine a plus 2, so I just leave it like that. So let's write our function, f of x, which is equal to, no, I don't want to equal sign there, is equal to 3x minus 4. So I'm going to take my a plus 2 and substitute that for x into both of those. <clears throat> so this is going to give me, whoops, so f of a plus 2, and that just stays there, don't do anything with that, don't distribute, is equal to 3 times, and let's put in a plus 2 for x, and then we have the minus 4 on the end. Notice there's no x with the minus 4 there, so it just stays there. Now, go ahead and simplify this, we'll distribute. and combine like terms. So my final answer is f of a plus 2 is equal to 3a plus 2, because when I plugged in a plus 2 for x, that's what I got. Okay, now we have g of 6m. So remember g of x was, let me take a look at that, x squared plus 2, that's what it was defined as. Okay, so I'm going to take 6m, and that goes into g of x for x in both of those places. So g of 6m is equal to 6m squared, notice 6m is in the place of x, plus 2, 6m squared is 6m times 6m, which is 36m squared, and then I have a plus 2, and since I can't combine those terms, they're not like terms, that's going to give me my final answer. So g of 6m is 36m squared plus 2. And my last example here looks a little scarier because I've actually got these square brackets, okay? This negative 2 is outside the square brackets, what this means is I need to evaluate what is g of negative 3 and then multiply it by negative 2. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be 2 times g of x, which is going to be 2, t I'm sorry, negative 2 times, and g of x was x squared plus 2. Okay? So what I'm going to do is take my 3, negative 3, plug it into there, whoops, I'm a little too far with that, plug it into there for x, and plug it into there for x. <clears throat> so we'll have negative 2 times g of negative 3 is equal to negative 2 times negative 3 squared plus 2. Okay. This part doesn't change at all. That's just negative 2 times g of negative 3. And here it's just PEMDASing. So I'll have negative 2 times negative 3 squared is 9 plus 2, or negative 2 times 11, or negative 22. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this up here. So negative 2 times g of negative 3 is equal to a negative 22. So in this section, we took a look at a lot of different things, what the definition of a function is, how to tell if something is a function, both by looking at a table, a mapping, and a graph. And then we talked about function notation. 
okay? Just It's basically just a substitution. Take whatever they put in the place of x and then plug that into your function for x and then you have the order of operations to come up with the value.